Hello, my name is Jacob Avila, and today I'm going to talk to you about how you can diagnose this guy right here, this aortic aneurysm that is leaking in this case, how you can identify this with a bedside ultrasound. So the probe of choice you're going to be using is the curvilinear or the phase rate transducer. The vast majority of AAAs are going to be infrarenal, and luckily for us, this is a pretty easy area to evaluate with ultrasound. So how good are we at doing this? This was a meta-analysis that was published in 2013 and asked the exact same question. They included seven studies with 655 patients, and they found that our sensitivity for diagnosing AAAs was 99%, and our specificity was 98%. Now, there is a little bit of a caveat. When you look at all the specific studies that they used, they actually excluded patients in which they could not visualize the aorta. So if you can't see the aorta, you can't say it, there's an aneurysm or not. But this number in most of the studies was actually fairly small, like less than 5%. So going back to our cartoon, we're going to be looking at the abdominal aorta in cross section. So with the patient lying down supine, we're going to place the probe anteriorly at the midline. And we're going to get an image that looks like this. So we have our aorta here on the left. We have a flatter IVC on the right. And this right here, this little arch looking thing, this is the vertebral body. Bony structures will actually absorb sound. So that's why you get this shadow, this kind of drop out of an image beneath it. But you should be able to see the cortex pretty well. And here's the ultrasound image of the exam. So the first image that we need to look for right here, this is pretty high up. This is, you want to start in the epigastrium. Here is the aorta, and this is the celiac trunk. That's kind of the first little branch point. And you can follow that down. So here I'm moving a little more towards the feet, a little more in a caudal orientation. And then right here, we have the SMA. Some people call that the mantle clock sign. So the IMA is kind of difficult to visualize, so we don't really look for that. And you want to follow the aorta all the way down until it gets the bifurcation of the iliacs, which is going to happen right about here, right there. So now we have two iliacs. So here's doing the examination on a real patient. You start in the epigastrum here, you find the aorta, and you just track the thing all the way down. Make sure you optimize your depth. You find the thing all the way down. And this happens a lot. This is bowel gas that's in the way. So what I do here is I'll just hold general pressure. You can see when I push a little bit, you can see that bowel shadow in the way, and I'll just hold pressure, and eventually that aorta will pop into view. There's that bowel gas, and there's that aorta. So you basically follow that all the way down. Always optimize your depth, follow you all the way down until right about there we see the aorta actually splitting. So there's aorta. And then right there it splits into two iliacs. Now what happens often is this split into the iliacs happens right at the belly button and the belly button's full of air. So you can do one of two things. You can either fill the belly button with the ultrasound gel, which kind of is a little bit weird. Or what you can do is just put the probe either caudally or cranially to the umbilicus to the belly button, and then angle it, fan it either cranially or caudally, whichever way you need to go to find that iliac. You just kind of fan until you find it. That's usually the way that I do it. So when you see a normal aorta like this, that's good. A triple A is going to look like this. It makes sense. It's just a big aorta. Here's an example of a not normal aorta. So here we're seeing that little, this aorta that's supposed to be small and kind of over here, we can see it's actually very enlarged. It actually moves a little more towards the midline in this case. If we measure that, it would definitely be abnormal. Here's another one. Now you can see a bowel gas issue here and we push down and then we can see this big aorta here. Now, when we throw color flow on this, oftentimes with these triple A's, there's only gonna be a small portion of that aorta that's actually gonna have flow in it. And this can actually be something that trips you up. When you're measuring the size of the aorta, don't measure the lumen where there's blood flow. You gotta measure the entire aorta. So outer wall to outer wall, that's extremely important because if you just measure this, you'll grossly underestimate the size of that AAA. You can definitely get a view in the longitudinal orientation, but it's much less useful and you run the risk of underestimating the size of you measuring that view. Let me try to explain that a little bit better. So imagine you have a cross-sectional view of the aorta here and you're bringing your probe in a longitudinal orientation down here. Now, if you get this perfect slice right in the center, then you'll probably get a good measurement of the aorta. But if you're oblique, so if you're slicing it over here instead, you're going to underestimate the size of that AAA. And most AAAs or most diseased aortas are not going to be in a perfectly straight line. So it's going to be difficult for you to know if you're oblique or if you're perfectly in the center of that lumen. For that reason, we usually measure the diameter of the aorta in cross section, not in longitudinal. Speaking of which, if you need a mnemonic to remember at what size an aorta becomes aneurysmal, it's pretty easy. So AAA, AAA, three letters, one, two, three. A AAA greater than three centimeters is considered abnormal.
Now, many places state that you need to look at the abdominal aorta and measure it at its most proximal, mid, and just above the iliac bifurcation. I feel like this actually takes a lot of work. So what I do instead is I'll take a clip of the entire aorta, then measure once at the widest point. If you don't have recording capabilities and have to print images to place on a physical chart, then you probably should take those three measurements. But if your machine can record clips, just record clips and take one measurement at its widest point. Five centimeters is definitely another number to tuck in the back of your mind. Greater than five centimeter AAA is pretty abnormal and more likely to be causing your patient's symptoms. Another thing too is that you can use the width of the vertebral bodies to estimate the size of the aorta. So the average width of the vertebral bodies at L1 through L5 is actually around four to five centimeters. So you can kind of use that to grossly estimate the size of that AAA. Another reason you have to make sure to evaluate the entire aorta is that there is a rarer form of a AAA called a saccular aneurysm, and this is what it looks like here. These guys are rare, but this is a good reason to make sure that you evaluate the entire aorta, not just one section, because you might have just a focal area of aneurysm like you see here. So to recap, a abdominal aortic aneurysm greater than three centimeters is considered abnormal. You want to place that probe in the anterior abdominal wall and look pretty much as high up as you can in the abdomen, so right at the epigastrium, and you want to go all the way down until you get to the split of the aorta into the iliac arteries.